It's time for Sam to finally get some information on his father. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panel, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. In Volumes 1, 2, and 3, Sam got the Nova Helmet, discovered that his father was missing and is possibly alive, and then he started to learn how to be a superhero. But at the end of our last story, Sam returned home to find an eviction notice on his door. So he did what other kids with powers would do. He brought home a giant boulder of gold from space. Except that there was kind of one problem with the giant boulder of gold from space. It was actually radioactive. So after he throws it into the sun, Sam comes home so that his mom can go to work and he can watch his sister. But while he was trying to sleep on the couch, his sister saw that Sam dropped his helmet and figured that she would try it on. Sam wakes up later to the phone ringing and that's when he sees that his sister kind of blew a hole in the wall trying to get to the phone. I'm coming Kaylee, whatever you do don't think, don't point, don't do anything. He sent her to bed and tries to clean up the mess, but he doesn't do a very good job of it. When his mother does come home, Sam tries to explain to her, but she just tells him that she wants to be alone as she sends Sam off. After helping some people, Sam returns home to tell his mother how he found the eviction notice, and she says that she understands why there was a giant radioactive gold boulder out in front of the house. She then tells Sam that things aren't looking good, but they will get through it. But first, he needs to clean up the mess he made from target practice the other night. Sam begins to say that he can explain it, but she stops him and tells him that his father used to do it all the time. At least he cleaned up after himself. Sam goes on to say that he knows his father's alive. His friend on the moon told him, and his mother tells him that she doesn't need him to tell her that. She can feel that Jesse Alexander's alive. But either way, she's glad that Sam is home safe, and tells Sam to say goodnight to the man on the moon. Sam thinks about how the next time he sees the Watcher, he's going to directly ask where his father is. Even though he's not supposed to, he kind of knows that the Watcher's his friend. Sometime later, Sam figured that he would talk to Jinnin, the girl that he saved from Skarn, but on his way out, he notices something coming from the moon. He decided to go check it out, but that's when he found the Watcher's place destroyed. And then he found him. The Watcher. Dead. With his eyes ripped out of his head. Sam is in shock. He needs to tell someone. He knew the Avengers could fix this. He knew that they could fight them. So as he flies down to talk to them, he finds that they are already battling the Mindless Ones. He joins in the fight and punches one. But as Sam stood proud, Daredevil tells him to go check on Ben. Ben? Sam says. The thing, you just plowed a mindless one into him. Spider-Man informs Sam. As Sam begins to help Ben out, Sam asks if these are the things that killed the Watcher, and Ben tells him, nah, these monsters can't even get it together to march in a parade. Whoever killed them is up there. So Sam flies up to Thor, but when he asks who could have done this, that's when Exterminatrix appears with more mindless ones. One comes crashing down into Sam, so he knocks it back out the window. And that's when Sam remembers, uh, these things can't fly. Down on the floor below, Ben looks up and sees something. Mother pus bucket. Sam, I'm gonna kill! And that's when the mindless one lands on Ben. Whoopsie, Sam says, as he tries to fly to get back into the fight. But all he can do is watch. All of the Avengers are attacking, and he just can't do anything. He at least wants to know the answer to his question. Why? Exterminatrix looks at Sam and tells him to watch. When he does, he sees the orb holding out something. The orb then exclaims, and what do bombs do? They go boom! Suddenly, a giant explosion begins to cover everything, but it wasn't a normal explosion. It was the kind of explosion that brings back memories and visions. In the past, Sam is able to see two Nova Corps members, one of them pointing a gun at another. But as a third Nova Corps member shows up, the one with the gun fires. The third member states that he wanted a body to send a message. And the one with the gun takes off his helmet. Dead is dead. And that's a message. That's when Sam sees it's Jesse Alexander. Are you sure you're a friend of Rockets, Jesse Alexander? You're pretty squeamish. And Jesse responds, I'm fine, Adomix. Let's go. Sam snaps back into the current times, waking up from what he saw. Please tell me you saw Kate Moss jump into an infinity pool with Carl LaFarrell's Halloween Masquerade 2. No? Me either. You okay? Tony Stark asks him. Sam tells Tony that he saw his dad. And Tony just says, uh-oh, daddy stuff. Sam begins to take off his helmet. Everything his dad said was a lie. He wasn't a hero. Sam doesn't know if he can wear this helmet anymore. But Sam does know someone that he could talk to. One of his dad's former friends, Rocket Raccoon. If you want to know more about the Original Sin event, what this is tying into, we have an entire video following Original Sin. This is actually Nova's tie-in event to that major event. The video will be linked down below, but let's move forward. As he goes to see Rocket, Rocket tells him that it's good to see him. What's up? And Sam tells him that he thinks his dad killed someone. You don't say, Rocket says. As Sam tries to explain, Rocket stops him. Hold that thought. We're trying to have a conversation over here. And he starts blasting at the people that are coming after him. After walking down the streets and shooting at the mercenaries as they talk, they both jump on board Rocket Raccoon's ship and they leave. Sam tells Rocket about the vision that he had about his dad and how there was a third Nova with a black Nova helmet. And his name was Adamox? Adamax? 
Adomix? He owes me money, Rocket Raccoon tells him. Rocket goes on to explain to Sam that Adomix is one of the first Black Novas, so if anyone has answers about Sam's dad, it's probably him. Plus, he owes Rocket some money. They finally arrive at the location, an ever-expanding place put together by old ships and bases and space stations. It's a lawless island where money is the only king. I love it here, Rocket Raccoon says. Rocket continues to tell Sam about how Adomix is one of the most powerful men there. He runs the casino, but he never comes out and he can't sneak a weapon in. So Rocket is just gonna go in and kill everyone. Sam tells him to hold on. Let's try subterfuge, a phrase that Sam heard from Beta Ray Bill in his last adventure. And Rocket Raccoon's simple response is, what the hell is subterfuge? Inside the casino, they sneak in with Rocket Raccoon as Sam Alexander's hat. And Rocket says that this is a dumb plan. Sam responds with, but it's a really cool casino. And Rocket says, stop talking. No one ever says that, ever. They sneak onto the elevator, but when a guard stomps them, they just knock him out. Rocket takes out his squirt gun, which we'll have to do. And that's when he says to Sam, don't ever tell anyone that you wore me. In Adomix's chambers, his robot tells him that his guests have arrived. But before he can say, oh crap, Rocket flies in and kicks him. After destroying the robots, Rocket tells Sam to ask whatever he wants to Adomix. He'll take care of the guards outside. As Sam tries to ask why his dad killed another Nova, Rocket notices the Shintari asps which he takes and throws them outside. Adomix then turns around and tells him, those were expensive! And Rocket looks back, the snakes or the gods? Both! Sam just wants to know what happened about his father, about the Black Novas, about all of this. Why is his father missing? Who are the Black Novas? Adomix begins to explain everything, that the Black Novas were not a special force of the Nova Corps. They felt that the Corps itself needed more power. Normally, Novas gained more power of the Nova Force the higher their rank was, but the Black Novas basically removed that restriction. They did help people when they could, but they mainly focused on themselves, and Sam's father stopped someone from ratting them out. But later, after Sam's dad left the Corps, Adomix and the rest of the Black Novas got caught and their helmets stripped, and Adomix wants his helmet back. While telling Sam this, he secretly pushed a button, and once he was done with his story, he begins to inject himself. Sam asks if he was sick, and Adomix tells him that he actually just released a poison in the room, and he injected himself with the antidote. So now, Adomix has a task. If they want the antidote, Sam and Rocket will have to go to the Black Nova bunker and get a device that will allow him to reprogram Sam's helmet so that he could use it. And with that, the two set off, because they don't really have much options. This sucks, Sam tells Rocket. Damn it, I didn't even get my money. Once Sam reaches the bunker, he is greeted by a hologram and he tells him that he needs a device to reprogram his helmet. And it asks, does he wish to retire or update his service records? Sam says, no, but what about those service records? After Sam gets back to Adomix, Adomix begins to try and wear the helmet, but it ends up shocking him. Sam tells Adomix that he knows all about what his dad did. He actually tricked Adomix to think that he killed someone, and the Novas actually used the Black Novas for good. But Adomix has had enough. He fires at Sam and tries to escape. But Sam has a gun of his own, and he shoots at Adomix but ends up hitting his money. Rocket hands his hand out to Sam. Yeah, leave the ray guns to me. You're a terrible shot. As Sam and Rocket quarter Adomix, Sam throws a rocket so that he can claw at Adomix's face. Get it off! Oh my eyes! Oh please! After receiving some help from Cosmo, Sam and Rocket finally get the antidote, and as they're leaving, Sam sees something. The man on the screen. It appears to be Jesse Alexander. With all of this, after no clear answers as to where Jesse Alexander is, Sam conveniently found him. Adomix gets back up and tells Sam that what he sees are the Chitauri Gladiators, and this broadcast isn't live, just like your dad maybe isn't. Sam turns and knocks Adomix down and tells him that he's glad his dad took him in. But Rocket isn't done. Where's my money? Adomix pulls out his money and hands it to Rocket. And 20 is your change. All of that over 50 credits? My 50 credits! Sam and Rocket part ways, but now it's time for Sam to go and rescue his father. He begins to sneak into the Chitauri homeworld by carrying a meteor on his back. And once he gets inside, he takes out the guards and then he blasts through the floors. Who's in charge here? That would be me. And if you want to chat, you need to make an appointment with my assistant. After that, Sam kicks the assistant with a power kick to the balls. Upon further consideration, I seem to have an opening in my schedule. The Chitauri leader then takes Sam to the prison cells where everyone is being kept. But the Chitauri leader tells him that they recently had a prison break. It was even on the news. Sam watches the video of the break and his dad breaking free, fighting to escape on the Chitauri ship till he hears someone. Your father fought bravely. Sam turns around to see a group of Chitauri in a cell. They were put there for failing to stop his father. Sam tells them good, but when he asks what's going to happen to them, they tell him that they're just gonna be put in the arena. Hey, you know what would be really funny? Sam asks. And a short 90 seconds later, Sam frees all of the prisoners and he helps them escape. Good luck out there, guys. Now it's time to catch up with my dad. Over on Jesse Alexander's stolen Chitauri ship, 
Jesse tries to tell everyone that it might be a while before everyone gets home. There's over a hundred of them and there isn't much fuel, so they will have to go to friendly places to refuel. One prisoner speaks up stating that they should go to his home world first, but another prisoner punches him, telling him that nobody put him in charge. All of the prisoners begin to fight with each other, and Jesse just stands there. <sighs> this is gonna be a long trip. We're getting close. Sam is almost back together with his father, and I hope you're enjoying this story as we go through it. There's two more volumes left, and I can't wait to show you how this ends. Don't forget to chat with me on Twitter at Comic Story and on Instagram at Comic Story, and I'll see you guys next time right here.